So I finally get a chance to sit down and talk about the 5.0 live stream, the Natland live stream, my thoughts on it and how good the changes actually were. Now, starting off with the trailer, I want to say that they did a good job at showing the map and showing the environment, but I'll say the only real hype part for me was the very end <laughs> for the most part. I think this one kind of falls short in comparison to the other like regional live streams or, or sorry, regional trailers. Uh, the Chaska part was pretty cool and the Ian Sun part was pretty cool, but mainly it was just Mavakia and Capitano at the end, you know, and Mavakia going Super Saiyan, you know what I mean? So, and with these trailers, what they do is they include everything in the patch. So, new areas, world quests, uh, Kanisha story quests, Mulani story quests, you know, if, maybe like a hangout probably, like they, they show every single possible thing they can possibly show in the quest, not just the Archon quest. So, it was cool to see the characters and what they can do. It wasn't necessarily the same way they did, like, you know, Lenny and Lynette and Fremine in the last, like, Fontaine one. But it was still cool, though. And I, it just wasn't as cool as, like, the last X.0 trailers, in my opinion. But I was actually really excited for the Abyss kind of stuff. I didn't really get to, like, get into that until a little bit after. You know, the first time you're always so high, but you can't really focus on what's happening. But yeah, the whole abyss part was very interesting to have that get thrown back into the mix again. Um, and then once again, showing off like everything, the bosses, Kanisha story quest, uh, you know, lava, tulpa, <laughs> stuff like that. But the main thing for me was this right here, like trying to figure out what is going on here. Like, is this the main Archon quest? Is this some kind of like story quest? Uh, I'm assuming it is. And then we could see the Electro for, for Ian San as well. Yeah, this is kind of sick. And of course, like I said, this was the highlight, you know. And that's definitely not her signature weapon, by the way. <laughs> it's not even done yet, probably. But yeah, yeah, little, little, little Capitano here <laughs> with the jacket off. And uh, yeah, going Super Saiyan with Mavakia. That was like super sick. So that is hype. And it's pretty interesting, too, because what they're doing now is they're doing 5.0. 5.1 and then 5.3 is the Archon class. So we're skipping 5.2. So that's an interesting way to do it because we're basically cutting off one patch that would usually be the patch to end the Archon quest. So maybe it's just a lot of content. Maybe it's something that's going to be in between the two. But yeah, that's the trailer. Then we have the characters. Now, I'm excited for this because Natland's entire gimmick, Natland's whole thing, is mobility and i think every single character in that line is going to have some kind of mobility mechanic because kanich mulani and kachina all have that in their kit just inherently in their kit and it's a part of what they do and i believe it's a part of like the night soul blessing thing it's like that that mechanic i think everyone's going to have something like that like think about like wander's little like blue meter Basically, everybody in that land is probably going to have something like that. So that's going to be really cool to have every character just be some kind of have some mobility to them. Because typically, the only people to really have that for the most part is Animo. So it'll be really cool to have that apply to other elements. And I've always wanted that. And they also have these mechanics where they they know their area. Like if they pick a they pick up something that they can actually track on the map. If they pick it up, they'll actually give like, you know, more stamina to the team or they'll give like more health or they'll give like movement speed. So I think almost every character that we have in this patch or all three of them, actually, they give some kind of benefit for picking up a certain plant. But they also can find that plant like on the radar because they have the ability kind of like the characters who can, you know, like Mika and Modstat or Klee and Modstat, Lenny and Fontaine. They can all find things on the map, but they can find specific things i'm not going to get into their gameplay too much because i'm not quite like 100 sure on things yet but i will say every character in this patch maybe aside from kachina they're very single targety it feels like i don't know that's just what i got from these little videos here they're very single targety like mulani can mark enemies but i don't think it's like a yelon mark it seems very single target same with kanich i mean kanich is literally like he has a grappling hook on one guy and he's just swinging around the one guy over and over and over again. So maybe it'll be good for like bosses or something, but I don't know. It seems very single target. I like this part right here where she's actually like grinding on this like invisible rail 
and she like switches to the other one it reminds me exactly of sonic unleashed like sonic all the sonic games where like you kind of jump out to the other rail it's the exact same kind of system there so oh but once again the mobility is the coolest part like everybody has some kind of mobility ability essentially so that's going to be awesome and speaking of characters i kind of want to get a little bit more into those characters oh what a lineup we'll be unstoppable so yeah i heard their voices i didn't think it was going to play automatically um i gotta say i think kachina fits well for english and i think mulani fits well for english but Kanich? I'm not the friend to come to for words of comfort or encouragement. I'm sorry. But when it comes to weighing the costs of your actions, ask away. That just, that just does not fit to me. Like, no offense to the actual voice actor, but like, that voice and that character do not go together. I'm sorry. But so I'll be, uh, you know, and we obviously we know that the JP version is uh, Naruto and Sasuke, <laughs> which is awesome. It's insane. But... Yeah, I, I'm sorry. The, the English voice for Kanich just does not match with the character. Like, it's not a, it's not a bad voice. It just doesn't match him. But oh, yay! Okay, let's go. Everybody else sounds fine, but uh, yeah, he just doesn't. It doesn't sound good. But I wanted to go here because they actually show the artifacts here, and once again, you see that that Night Soul. That is a mechanic that is specific to the Natland characters. Only they can do this. So I was thinking like, man, you know, both of these have that in their description, which would imply like, I mean, you basically can only use these on that line characters, right? And it makes sense. But yeah, it kind of really puts a barrier between the older characters and the new ones, you know what I mean? So, but it's not necessarily only Natlan, it's more so the artifact set will go on a Natlan character, but the four piece of Cinder City will actually be good for other characters as well so this can you know give those other characters a buff and i'll be honest i'm i'm, I'm gonna call it i'm gonna say this is gonna be the set for the archon because it's a little too specific and way too long <laughs> so i'm assuming this is for, for the archon because it just seems way too way too detailed so but yeah essentially it's like 12 percent elemental damage bonus and an additional 28 percent elemental damage bonus um, you know, just as long as you trigger a reaction that's actually related to the elemental type. So like a vape, right? You know, if, if the pyro archon is pyro and somebody does a hydro, you know, a vape, a forward vape, they would get this bonus. So, and it very much sounds like it'd be good, like a Mulani and Mavakia combo, unless like Mavakia is like an attack scaler or something, but yeah, that's Cinder City. Cinder City is just like a big bump in damage for reactions that have to do with the character and then obsidian codex just looks like a, a crit set it's like a better monster say hunter but for natlan characters so basically when the character is in the night soul blessing so like their special mode natlan mode and they're on the field their damage dealt is increased by 15 percent. so like just a 15 percent damage bump just for basically being in your your special mode right your natlan mode and the four piece is literally like when you consume one point of it like those meters remember your crit rate gets increased by 40%. 40. Now it is for six seconds, so you know you need to actually pay attention to the character's cooldowns and what they do and see if you can fit your damage in that window. But yeah, 40, 40 is crazy. 40% is insane. And I know it's 36 as much as a hunter, but still, like that extra four, just seeing that nice and even 40 is it's kind of nuts. So oh. This effect can trigger once every second. Never mind about the whole cooldown thing. Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that's just 40 crit rate. So that's going to make builds very interesting. That's going to make builds very bizarre because you're going to just have 40 crit rate sitting there. Yeah. So maybe you do like just a little bit like 20 crit rate or so or like, I don't know. I mean, you, you can still have 40 yourself. Because then you get 40 from this, that's 80, you know? But you may not want to be running a crit weapon. So, yeah. Those are the artifacts. Then we have the reruns. Holy. Holy. These reruns are like, they are stacked. I don't know what people are going to do. You got Kazuo here. Like, he was like, dude, he was just here. I swear he was just here. I swear he was just here with like all Haytham or something like that. He was just here. We get a free Kachina as well, and she'll also be on the banner on the first side with Mualani. So, 
and we actually did see the banners so look out for a banner review i gotta look at more into mulani before that but yeah kazawa and mulani and the kachina on the first half for the first phase so that is that is a rough one brand new natlan character and kazawa then you have kanich and raiden now the problem here right they have engulfing lightning and of course kanich's signature the issue here we haven't seen Chevrous again ever since Raiden's last banner. If they are basically trying to put Kujo Sara and Chevrous in the same position, where every Raiden banner we're just gonna magically have a Chevrous, that could absolutely happen again. So we could end up with Chevrous on this banner, and if that is the case. I was actually gonna skip Kanich, to be honest with you, but if Chevrous is on the banner. That might have to change. Might have to change. I'd actually rather just wait at this point and have Chevrous be on the Archons banner. But yeah, those are your reruns. Those are your actual brand new characters as well. It's pretty stacked. Pretty stacked. Um, Raiden, you know, she still can hold her own. But uh, you know, I don't know. I just I don't, I'm not really that excited about the Matlin lineup. So I don't know what I'll do. I don't I don't know if I'll pull Kanish or not, but those are your lineups for the for the for the banners. It's pretty good. It's pretty good, all things considered. Fang of the Mountain King. That's what it's called there. And Surf's Up. It's a very nice and simple one. So she is indeed a catalyst user. You get your craftables as well. Which they usually all do look pretty good. They very very much fit the theme of the actual like map, the actual region. So we'll see if these are any good. Usually one or two of them are pretty good and a lot of them actually have the same passes. So we'll see how that plays out. Then we have like the whole reputation system where it's essentially going to be based off of tribes, I think. Like you're going to have this tribe, that tribe, and you're going to have like different areas where you can actually level up your reputation. So it'll be a slightly different system. And obviously you saw the quality of life updates where we're getting rid of the reputations after you finish them for that, for that land. So there is a there's a slight change there. I think you can go to different places and level up your experience in different areas. And you have to actually finish these quests to unlock them. So that's interesting. But going along with the tribes, there's also the Syrians we're gonna talk about. And you really do have full control of them. Like, I mean, you literally kind of like essentially jump into them. <laughs> so, and I like the skit here where the, the administrative uh, employees actually beat the actual devs. <laughs> ironically enough but um yeah so essentially you can actually control them fully you do have a slight meter there it looks like but i thought it was going to be some kind of like system where you could be them for a second but no i mean you can actually just take them over so that'll be pretty cool it'll be kind of a a pretty big change from what we're used to because usually we get to play as our characters most of the time but now we'll actually be playing as these guys for a plethora of challenges and things like that probably in the story as well so it'll be interesting to, to kind of explore with them and see puzzles and challenges that you're like what do i do here and you're like oh i need a syrian for it so but i guess get used to actually using syrians and you can also transform into other ones too that was weird interesting so that'll be a thing uh i don't know if i'm gonna love it i don't know if i'm gonna be like just kind of in the middle about it i'm not quite sure i like playing as my characters so, but you know, either way, I think it'll be cool to control them, at least for the first couple patches. <laughs> Somebody made a great point too about like, maybe we'll unlock different ones as we go. Cause these three kind of mimic the characters that we have right now. The one that drills is reminiscent of Kachina. The one that kind of has like his tongue that, you know, goes out to grapple onto things is like K uh, Kanich. And the shark one is essentially like Mulani. So. I feel like when each character comes out, it's gonna change a lot in that land because we're gonna get things that basically kind of bounce off of the character, you know? Because it seems like so far, everything is based off of Mulani, Kanij, and Kachina. So I think it'll be really cool to see what they do as the patches continue. Then we get to the part where Michael shows up and everybody's on the edge of their seat because this is the quality of life section. So the actual fourth anniversary rewards are going to be a temple, another temple like by locking in you get a little elixir for like your artifacts or actually no, no sorry that's the uh, elixir that's the the one to uh, put a substat on your artifacts actually two fragile resins 
and two extra things one like i guess little pet and then something else i'm not quite sure if that's going to be but that's like the main rewards but obviously when i get into it we had our quality of life updates that we knew about already such as the mini map having like features where you can actually see what the flowers are um the battle pass changes no more reputation quest after you finish the like you know main one for the region so and that's you know we kind of lose out on that one because we don't get the more anymore but for natland specifically they're compensating us with a million mora but after natland like in the long term that kind of is kind of an l because we're going to lose a lot of mora so if you don't even do them anyways it's not really a problem for you but if you did any one of that Mora, you will lose out on it, you know, in Shnesnaya. Unless they're going to give us more of that as we go. But there's also the 500 Primos for every Archon quest. So, now I'm not quite sure if he mentioned Story Quest as well. I think he just mentioned Archon Quest. So if that's the case, it'll be 500 for 5.0, 500 for 5.1, and then 500 for 5.3. So, yeah, I think it's just Archon Quest. And... A lot of the things about these quality of life updates, people have been saying, hey, this should have happened three years ago, you know? And to a certain extent, yeah. I mean, I, I do agree with that. Like, some changes, you know? Like, the poor people with the weapon banner. You know what I mean? Because that's also a change coming up, too. We'll talk about it in a little bit. But essentially, that's been a pretty big thing with a lot of these rewards. It's just like, you know, it should have happened a long time ago. But at the end of the day, I guess, like, better late than never, right? So... And speaking of better late than never, I actually really like this. This is a new little system for the test run. You have like a little test run event where when a new character comes out on a banner, they will have this little menu for them. And instead of getting like a couple materials for like level 20 or, or level 40, you'll actually get enough to level them to 60. So I believe 60 unascended, not 60 ascended. So you'll hit 60 and you'll be capped at 60. And that's a pretty huge deal, like, to just get somebody to 60 right off the rip. You know what I mean? Especially if you're somebody who just started playing the game in Natlan, right? I mean, sure, you could probably run to Natlan, yeah, but, it's, you know, you want to play the character that you have at the given time. If you started playing in, in 5.0 and you picked up M Mulani, it's like, I mean, it really sucks to not be able to play who you just got. You know what I mean? So... And essentially, that early in the game, you can't even get 260, I don't think, right? You're, you're Ascension locked. So, you know, I mean, early on you can eventually, but like, you know, the beginning, beginning, you're locked at like like 20, I think. So, that's a big W, because it's like, you know, good lord, like, let, let, you know, you want to play who you want to play when you get them, right? So, maybe not like level 90 with like good artifacts, stuff like that, you know what I mean? That'd be like the, the later part, but just have somebody leveled up enough to where you can use them. So that's gonna be, that's a great change. It's a big W, I like that one. Then we have the quick start feature for our conquest. That's also a pretty big W. Now, I want it to be known, as I mentioned, you need to get through leeway first. So do your mindset event and do your, your leeway our conquest as well. Once those are done, then you're good. So essentially what you, what you can do is actually skip Inazuma. And actually, you could skip Sumeru as well, and Fontaine. So you could you could skip a lot. You could skip a lot of the game if you just want to get to something right away. You know what I mean? So that's also a big W as well. Like just give people access to things that they need to get access to if they're just jumping in. You know what I mean? And like I said, for long-term players, it doesn't really mean much for us because, you know, I mean maybe if we just didn't do an Arc Conquest or something. I guess, but still, that's definitely a big W for, for newer players and just a way to kind of fast forward to where you need to get to quickly. So, but once again, you need to finish Mindstat and Lee away first before you can do that. And real quick, you get, you know, more pulls for Solar Reunion. So when you haven't played the game in like two weeks, you come back and you'll actually get more rewards for that as well. But be aware, if you, if you are gonna actually look into this, you do need to get experience first. So it's not simply just log on and get 10 pulls. You have to, you know, for every 100 resin used and do the Archon Quest, uh, you know, complete exploration objectives, you know. So level up your characters. Like, it's not just log back in and get 10 pulls. You do need to actually do stuff first to get this. So 
Is it a good change? Yeah, for sure. I mean, more pulls is more pulls, right? But keep in mind that it's not just like you get welcome to 10 pulls. You need to actually do things to get that experience first. This one kind of bothered me, man, because I was like, hold on. The characters that have the ability to find stuff are kind of getting like phased out here. You know what I mean? I mean, they still can be useful for sure because they can actually pinpoint exactly where it is. This is just like a general area for it. But yeah, man, like Lenny and Mika, and Klee, and you know what I mean? Like uh, uh, Goro, like they kind of are getting outshined here, you know? Like you can just see where the stuff is on the map. But I, it's still a big W. It's a be way better than having to have a certain character for it. But yeah, it, it's that's definitely good because nobody wants to have to go to a third party app or be on their second monitor or using the interactive map and especially mobile players. Most players with all these games, Hyoverse games, they're all on mobile. You don't want to have to close the game on your phone and have to, you know, go to your browser to find something, you know what I mean? Or look up on YouTube, where is Cecilia Flowers, you know what I mean? So that's really annoying to have to close the game and have to open it back up and it restarts over again because you've been out of it for too long. So that's a huge plus for, for mobile players. Keep everything in the game so you don't have to leave right it makes it very annoying when you have to leave or like look something up because you, you know you have to keep on going in and out and in and out and it's annoying so definitely a good change there nothing wrong with that one world level nine more drops uh i know the actual like karagi oh my goodness terrible oh, look at that you got two before it was awful i like, tried to farm those things like you just got nothing from them nothing and certain mats have like a gray a blue and a purple certain mats only have a green and a blue so yeah sometimes it just it got really frustrating with certain things but yeah world level nine and i believe you get two hundred thousand more for that all right shoot and i like to say i think this actually means because look at the team too it's kind of indicating that you we're already here and you have to do it now, right? Like, like we are all gonna have to do like long-term players. We have to go back to this again, which is very reminiscent and very nostalgic actually. Cause think about it. When's the last time we did a world ascension quest? When's the last time we did this? So it's gonna feel nice to go back and do this again. You get 200,000 more for us, it. crazy. Yeah, that's gonna be cool. Like, I haven't, we haven't been in that domain in forever. So years, in fact. So for some of us, maybe even two years. And also, yeah, more drops as well. So for the for the bosses, this one. Hear me out. I'm a little worried about this, because you always get, they say at least three drops, which means we might be able to get more than three. That'd be awesome. But here's the problem. If we get three drops every single time, right? That's gonna mean that we hit the max amount of boss mats that we need for a character faster. Now that's good. But the problem is, are we gonna get more crystals? Because if we're getting the same amount of crystals as we got before, but we're getting more boss mats, we're gonna have an imbalance where we, we get our boss mats more often, but we still get the same amount of crystals. So we're not going to have crystals to level up the characters in the first place if we are accelerating the rate of the boss mats so quickly, right? See what I'm saying? They would need to up the crystals as well as the boss mats to balance it out. Because if we're just ripping through boss mats left and right, three, 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 you know, three, six, nine, twelve, and we're getting our characters leveled up immediately, we're going to run out of crystals. So... That's a bit of, that's a problem that I had in my head. I was thinking of like, uh, I don't know, like it's a good change, but you need to also give us more of the other stuff too, if you're going to give us these. So just saying, I'm just a little worried about that. I hope that doesn't become a problem. If you're somebody who doesn't really build that many characters, that's not a problem for you. But if you're somebody who does, you, you definitely can run out. You know, it's a lot of crystals level up a character to level 90. So, and especially like, think about like Dendro. Dendro is still relatively a new element, so it's like, 
if you don't really have a Dendro one, so you don't really have a reason to fight the Dendro boss, you're not going to have Dendro. You know what I mean? So, especially for that element exactly, like, it's going to be kind of rough. But either way, it's a good change, but I just hope that they actually take that into consideration. Because that's a bit, a little bit iffy on that one. I feel like you got to add more of the other items to balance it out. But that's all. Now we got another one here that I like a lot, where you can actually get rid of artifacts and you will get the actual XP for them. Now he did get rid of a three star one and a four star. So that's my question. If we get rid of a three star, do we get the blue? And a four star is the purple? Because I mean, it, it was a lot. Like he, he got rid of 36 of four star artifacts. It's a lot and got 11 from it. So, I mean, I'm sure the rates will probably be kind of low just cause you know, I mean, that's kind of how it is, but, oh, maybe it's XP. Yeah, the number on the side. But still, that's definitely a, a great change because when you get rid of them now, you just get more. And at least you get something from it, but like, you know, if anything, when you're dealing with artifacts, artifacts should all be in one collective pool where all the things that you do with artifacts help your artifact grind so this is a, a really good change like you you lose it you, you get rid of an artifact to get xp back you know so it's it's really it's just it's great to see these change these changes happening in genshin because in star rail i've had it for you know for so long now and, and like we've always made the joke of all the surveys that we gave genshin like the genshin dev team they took it and they put it into all their other games <laughs> So it's nice to finally see Kenshin like, you know, putting those things in there, you know? Now for whatever reason, if it's like catch, you know, playing catch up or if it's weathering waves or whatever it is, at the end of the day, I'm just happy to see it happening. You know what I mean? So that's gonna be a W for the artifact experience. And they kind of have to do it too with the other changes happening as well. Cause leveling artifacts is pretty much gonna be a part of our, our like battle pass missions now. Then we have the Sanctifying Elixir. Now, I want to double check and see what the requirement is. Obtain 25 five-star artifacts. See, with this book, is it retroactive? Because I know there's some missions that were retroactive and there's some that aren't. Because I still have those four-star, oh. I don't know if I leveled up a bunch of four-star artifacts already though. But either way, will it be retroactive? Like. Are we going to have to do this to unlock it like currently? That's going to be the question. This is we can also travelers can complete adventure handbook quest to obtain the, the gadget. OK, so, yeah, I wonder if we're actually going to have to level up 25 artifacts in 5.0 or can we just do it like is it just retroactive like they already know like we did it before. So we'll, it will be good. That's the question right and then oh we gotta talk about this because I, I just i just saw this the other day check this out right you can see look at that on the bottom right hand corner it's kind of in the way let me actually like sew this down so you can see it says it costs four now how rare are these things exactly it costs four for a goblet like, hold on a second. How rare are these sanctifying elixirs? Because that's a lot. And not to mention too, let me get rid of myself here. You can see in the bottom left hand corner, it actually says that there's actually like a limit, a time limit. Look at that. Each set can be defined one time, time remaining this cycle, 18 days. So does that mean like we can only one remaining definition attempts for this cycle. So it sounds like a cycle might be like as long as a banner, like 20 days or like 20, 18 days. Can we only change our, our substats like once every 20 days or so? Once every month, every three weeks or two weeks and two weeks in a bit. That's a little concerning. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, hold on a second. I know that we can get these elixirs from the paid battle pass, right? So that's, that's not great, but <laughs> paid battle pass and you can get it from the open world as well. So it is in the world. It is accessible to everybody free to play or not. 
so you can actually get them and you can craft them as well so here's the crafting section so once again you can you can actually craft only one per cycle and it's by artifact xp as we saw earlier the same symbol there is, is right there as well because these numbers don't equal 100 9 9 9 9 12 12 12 17 yeah that's like 89 so yeah you don't you don't want it to be levels either way like that wouldn't you wouldn't want that it's better this way for xp but that's how that's how, that's how it's gonna work which uh, you know i mean i'm happy that we have the elixir period just in general but you know we're not gonna be running around with double crit pieces every single day you know what i mean like what i'm saying is don't expect to be getting this thing like it's you know selling off the shelves like it's probably going to be pretty rare to get one of these. And I hope that we can get at least two to three because it costs you at least four for the goblet. But it, like overall, it's a great change. I'm glad we have it. But what I'm saying is this is kind of rare. Like these things are not going to be, you know, happening too often. But I think obviously it probably should be rare, right? I mean, why would you be able to get double crit pieces just, you know, out the blue like that, right? So, you know, it's almost equivalent to self-modeling resin in Star Rail and the tuning calibrator in Triple Z. Kind of like that, right? Where it's kind of a rare occasion. But what I'm saying is I just hope they put it in a lot of different spots. Put it here. Put it in Paimon's Bargains. Put it in the Abyss. Put it in Imaginarium Theater. Put it in places that... Like, put it in your end game modes, you know what I mean? Like, put it in more places. That's all I ask. Don't have it just be battle pass, craft, or one pops up in the map per patch or something like that. Like, put it in events, put it in a lot of different places so we can actually have access to it. That's all I'm going to say. Like, give us that thing on the regular in events that we can control, like end game, and we can't control, like events. So, that's all I'm saying. Because at the end of the day, it is just a stat selector, which means it's, it's 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 to help you get by, right? It's to help you like like oh my god, I've been farming this set for three months, like just give me one good piece. But even if you do use it and you put double crit on your pieces, is it gonna roll double crit? You know what I mean? So uh, you know, but it is a good change, and I'm happy about it. Um, and yeah, so that's a good change. But how rare are they? Is the question then there's the battle pass selection where like we can kind of pick what we really want out of most of it like you know we can actually pick and see like and also this too i want to mention you can scroll down and i believe every single thing is now available like every region yeah so we got like natland fontaine sumeru and there's more down there yep so yeah any nation yeah so you can pick anyone which is awesome because before you could only pick like the most recent three, you can never pick Mondstadt or even Liyue. So that's actually a big W right there. You can pick Natland, you can pick any region. And essentially you can kind of pick like Hero Witch, you can pick Amora, you can pick Artifact XP. You can pick what you want most of from the battle pass. If I can actually find the image again. Yeah, like right around here. You can actually pick, there you go. XP books, Mystic Enhancement or um, the Artifact XP. And basically, like, yeah, if you already have, like, if you have 16 billion more you don't need anymore, you know, don't don't get it. Don't pick it, right? If you have a million XP books, don't pick it. Pick something else. If you have 9,000 Mystic Enhancement or don't pick it. Pick the Artifact one. You know what I mean? So that's it gives you, like, a elimination process of just like, hey, I don't really need this anymore, so I'm not going to pick it. And he also mentions that when you do like the shrines or like the actual like, you know, Fountain of Lucene or any kind of like one of the trees, you actually get more rewards going forward. So, yeah, I mean, more primos is more primos. This is like double the amount of a shrine. So I think in the end, you'll end up with like a temple, he said, from doing all these. I'm not quite sure if he means for chests as well, like everything, everything, but for just the things he mentioned, Fountain of Lucene, Statue of the Seven, stuff like that, if you complete all those, you'll end up with a temple from them. So, which is a little alarming, because what did we have before? <laughs> did we have a temple from these? I guess we didn't. 
But yeah, well, it basically be a 10 pull for completing all those kind of stuff, which more rewards, more rewards. Now, this is a funny one. This is called capturing radiance. Now, what capturing radiance is when you're on a 50 50, right? There's a 10 percent chance that you'll get capturing radiance. So very risk light. If you do get capturing radiance, it's basically a safe. It saves you from getting Chi Chi or D Luke or not the promotional character. That's all it is. It's a 10% chance for it to appear. And if it does appear, you essentially get saved from losing your 50 50. So essentially, now when you're on a 50 50, it's if you get capturing radiance, it's more like a 50 45. Something like that, essentially. But basically, like I said, 50-50, if you do the pull and nothing happens, like no animation, but you hit pity, you're either going to win or you're going to lose, right? It's a 50-50. You don't know. But if you get the capturing radiance, like special animation, then you know, oh, I'm good. Like, I I've been saved. So that's all it is. That's all it is. It's, it's basically just a safe. It it's, a, it's a fail safe. It's just like a 10% chance to get saved from losing. So, you know, it'll definitely make things a little bit more hype when you're pulling, because when you're pulling, you're actually a little bit more likely to win your 50-50, a little bit. You now have a 10% chance to maybe get saved. So I, I like it, you know, it, it'll come in handy. Like if you're, you know, going for a lot of uh, copies of a character or something like that. And like, you know, um, I'm not quite sure if it works for the weapon banner as well, but yeah, I'm not quite sure. So that's all it is. Nothing too crazy. Another good thing is actually the weapon banner. You know, still not as good as Withering Waves. Probably they have they have the best one for sure. Like you, you just you're always guaranteed <laughs> the five star weapon. But uh, this update basically gets rid of the extra fate point. So instead of having to hit pity, oh I lost. I got to go again. Hit pity. Like I lost again. Are you kidding me? Then you got to go a third time to get what you wanted to guarantee it right now it's going to be like you hit pity oh i lost it now i'm guaranteed so there you go now it's only one it's basically just like a normal banner now took him long enough you know i mean he had like you know remember like the staff staff of homeless video from a long long time ago that was that was before we even had a fate system period so once again this is one of those things where it's like this should have been here a long time ago because you really kind of, you know, like squeeze everybody dry after four years of the game. You know what I mean? Like I said, better late than never, I suppose. It is a good it is a good change. But yeah, it's really robbed us from all the other years of playing. <laughs> I feel like there should be some kind of compensation or something. But still, st still a great change. And last but certainly not least, as you just saw. A quest to kindle ancient flames. You can pick a five star, standard five star, of your choice every single year. So, honestly, this was like the big highlight of the live stream. And while they are standard characters, to be fair, a free five star is a free five star, you know? So that's always a W in my book. And obviously for this upcoming anniversary, this will be here. So you'll be able to pick and it'll be available during 5.0. So I'm sure you guys have gotten the question about 16, 18,000 times, you know, who are you going to pick? Who are you going to pick? Who should you pick? Let's go through all the characters and talk about which one is good for you. You know, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. But no, just casually though, like who, who are you going to pick? If you're going to pick anybody, do you even really care to pick? I know there's a lot of people who do, people who don't. I know people who haven't got a Kaching in like two years. I know people who haven't got D Luke in two years, three years. So it's it's a, it's a good change because it's not just like hey, it's a free five star. It's hey, it's a free five star every single year. Now, once again, you could say where was this at last year or where was this at three years ago? But still, going forward every year, you get this chance. So. I don't know what Genshin plans to do in the future because we, you know, we're in that land right now and we're going to Shnezdaya. So I don't, I don't know how many more years of Genshin we're going to have left, but this is a W change and it's, it's awesome. 
I'm glad to see this. Like I said, I'm just I'm very happy to see these changes coming to Genshin because Genshin's been getting it's been getting pretty thrashed. And you know, I mean, it is on the devs. I mean, the other ones make the decisions, but you know, a lot a lot of Genshin could never has been going on the last you know year and a half. So it's nice to see them actually have a a very good change. You know, and you're, you're gonna see a lot of those people kind of come out the woodworks like in your face you know look at us we got the change now look at me look at us like we won you know we finally we could we actually could you know all that kind of stuff is happening already in my discord and on twitter and stuff like that so but yeah overall great changes um my only real my only like real concern was the whole crystal to boss mat ratio i'm just a little concerned about that but besides that yeah all great changes um for me personally, I'll be picking Jean C4 because I like Jean. I already have C6 of Mona. I have C6 of Kaching. And I have C6 of Dia. I have C5 of Chi Chi. C4 uh, or C3 of Jean. C2 Tainari. And C4 D Luke. So for me personally, I, li I like Tainari. But he doesn't have the fontaine special where his normal attack gets the damage bonus and his constellations um or his the levels rather sorry he doesn't have that he has the skill in his burst which is kind of just like yeah but yeah i'll probably pick gene most likely so that'll be my pick oh one more thing too i want to mention imaginarium theater this got like a even harder mode to it and here's the thing about this right it's a two-way street there are people where they're like complaining, saying this sucks because we're not going to have that many characters. But then there's also people saying, dude, it's for end game. Like, that's the whole point. It's an end game mode. Like, it's not for you. It's for end game players. I want to meet in a minute. Just because you are an end game player doesn't mean you're going to have this many characters. And if you're not an end game player, the sentiment is still true that this is not for you either. If you're not an end game player, you shouldn't even be worried about Abyss or Imaginary M Theater because you're not ready for it. You can play the easy mode, I guess, if you want, but you, you, this is an end game mode. You're not. You shouldn't be prepared for this yet. But also, end game players on the other on the other end, you can be an end game player and not necessarily have enough characters. <laughs> so. I mean, think about the Abyss, right? The Abyss is just have two good teams, you know? And of course, it depends on the occasion of what the Abyss is. But yeah, it's kind of like it's a two-way street, right? Just because you're an endgame player doesn't mean you're going to have 22 characters up to 26. But hey, you know, I mean, I mean, to be fair, there's a lot of four stars, so maybe you would. But I'm just saying overall, you may not have the requirements to do it, even if you are an endgame player. But I mean, I'm always down for Kenshin to add more endgame stuff. I, I wish, you know, it could be a lot more, a lot like Star Rail, where we have, like, different things that we can put our characters into to fight against. But I'm glad that we're getting something different. I wish they would kind of give us some more love in the Abyss, not so much Imaginary M Theater. But I'm happy about the changes as well. Uh, it's going to be more about reactions now and not about, like, you know, Hey, you can only do Electro today. You can only do Fire or Pyro this month. Now it's going to be about reactions. So that's a big help because it wasn't just about having enough characters. It was about having enough characters within a certain element as well. So that does free up the space a little bit too. And I do like that change. That, that's a good change. But we'll still see how it plays out though. I'm not too big on Imaginary M Theater. I think it just kind of the way the characters work in, in this game doesn't really cater to it too well. But if they change it like this, where it's more about reactions and we kind of stop with the, the cope teams and just the, you know, weird, like, hey, Animo, Animo, Animo and Hydro, or, you know, Geo and Dendro. You know what I mean? Hey, it's Geo and Dendro this month. So <laughs> it'd be fine if we could play characters like Diona and Baiju and make them into a DPS because the buffs are that crazy like if it was like similar to universe and sorrow where i can have a bailu that does a million damage or sorry i could do a chi chi that does a million damage something like that so it sounds good on paper for imaginary M theater but let's wait until it's out and wait until these changes actually take place to see how i feel about it but right now 
sounds okay on paper, but let's see how it plays out. But yeah, besides that, like I said, cool little animation we got, uh, TCG, we got Sean Yoon, uh, Hydra, Hilly Chill, and Fremenet. We also got the fantastic and very well done Symphony. Shout out to them. Uh, we also saw, what's his name, Robert? I might have might have forgot about that the conductor. We saw him make his own video as well. He, he's seen him around. So, and last but not least, we had the goaded VAs. We had Sarah, Jenny, Crystal V, Amberly Collins, uh, Aaron V, or, 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 or Aaron, Arlequino here. That's my favorite one because it looks kind of like cute and scary at the same time. <laughs> oh, and you can't forget about Stephanie. Stephanie killed it too. She's been killing it for years. She's been showing you forever, you know, or she's been Claire with him, but love her voice and yeah, does an amazing job too. But, but yeah, and that was the live stream. Uh, my favorite, Emily Amber Aviles. She actually, she just, she killed it, man. I loved her story quest and love the character. I, I love the, uh, the English voice for her. So, but yeah, that was the live stream. Those are my thoughts on it. We are, we are looking pretty good. We're looking pretty good. Going on to 5.0, we're looking pretty good. I know there's still some controversy with stuff, certain things and whatnot with the characters, but we're looking pretty good. So that'll be all for me. I wish you guys a grand, almighty journey for Natland. Hope you guys have fun and I uh, hope that more changes come, you know? Just because we have these changes right here doesn't mean we're not going to get more as Natland progresses. So we'll see. Almost done. We're almost done with Genshin. It's almost like over. You know, 5.0. That's crazy. Well, that'll be all for me. And I will catch you guys in the next one.